Well, hello again, everybody. Well, today's video is definitely going to be what I class as a, a quickie. Well, this is another of those industrial control boards that we use at work. And for those playing at home, I think I've scribbled out the day. All oh, right, okay, it was manufactured in 2002. And uh, what went wrong with this was that uh, one of our engineers was actually servicing the piece of equipment on site. And uh, this is just uh, last year we went to do a service. And he switched the uh, power supply off and then he switched it back on again and nothing would work. It turns out that you know we did some investigation work and this board had died. And it's actually died kind of quite catastrophically. So I'm hoping the camera is going to focus in but I don't know if you can see this uh, IC here has actually, well it's cracked straight down the middle, it's broken in half and it looks as though it's been pretty hot. And uh, yeah, I'm not. I can't really even fully read the number on that. So uh, I'm not. I'm not dead sure even what it is. I'm going to make a guess. It's something to do with the uh, the switching regulator. You know, last week we talked about how difficult some of these ICs are to remove, and uh, you know, I tried to demonstrate by removing one of these relays, and it just dropped out. Well. I was hoping I would, I would have more of a struggle trying to get one of these out and then I could bitch and moan at the hole sizes. So we're going to have a go at um, taking one of these out. So just looking at the circuit, I'm guessing the way it operates is, well it says here we get 24 volt AC in, we've got a fuse, uh, then we've got a regulator, sorry not a regulator, we've got a bridge rectifier even, don't know where I get regulator from. Then we've got a major smoothing, oh god major, full of spoonerisms today aren't I? Got a main smoothing capacitor and uh, yeah I don't know this actually feels a little bit bulgy to me yeah a little bit bulgy so I think it might be interesting just to measure the ESR of that um, not that I would have expected it to blow up an IC down here so it looks as though we've got some kind of uh, pre-regulator there is that, what does that say on it? 317, LM317. It's an LM317. I think an LM317 is, is it something like a one amp adjustable regulator? So maybe that drops it down from, I don't know, probably feeding 24 volt AC. We smooth it, then we maybe uh, pre-regulate it maybe to 24 volts or something. And then we've got one of these pulse devices. Now I don't, again, I can't remember. Is this pulse device, is this just an inductor and the chip next to it is the actual uh, control chip or is the uh, the regulator pulse built into this pulse module? So it does seem a little bit suspicious that we've got this enormous diode here and I'm wondering if this is the, uh, what do you call it, would you call it a flyback diode? You know, the switch mode power supplies normally have a diode, don't they? Uh, yeah, I don't know, is that the diode? Possibly not. Don't know. Don't have the circuit. Making excuses. What we're going to do is we're going to have a go at pulling this IC out and replacing it. Okay, so I've got this uh, this Christmas tree here. Silence. Do any of you know what a Christmas tree is? Ho, ho, ha, ha. Remember me, old chum? Riddle me twice, Batman. Well, it's a term they actually use in the rail industry, and I don't know if it's common to any other industry. And uh, the way it was explained to me is that a Christmas tree, it's a spare train that the train operators have. So maybe if you're operating a, you know, a fleet of trains, what you would do is you would maybe, maybe you need 40 trains to actually run that fleet of, you know, get all your commuters to work and home again. So you, you have 40 trains, but you actually buy more than 40 trains. What you actually do is you maybe buy 42 trains. So then you've always got you know, a spare train if one of the others breaks down. And then you have a train that they call a Christmas tree. Now what a Christmas tree is, it's a, it's a train that you just pull parts off. You know, you just use it as a huge rolling parts store and you rub parts off it to keep the other trains in service. So if anybody knows anything about the rail industry or in fact industries in general, has anybody heard of a spare part or a spare vehicle being called a Christmas tree before? It's something that I'd never heard of until a few years ago. But yeah, that's what they call it. So here's our Christmas tree. And I think that this uh, Christmas tree is going to yield, it's going to yield a capacitor for us because I think this other one looks a bit bulgy. And it's also going to yield this uh, LM675, 
which I think is what's blown up. Is that an LM675? Yeah, LM675. So maybe we'll actually look up what some of these parts are, or maybe we'll just totally ignore it and just play it by ear. Because let's face it, often when we try to do repairs, we don't necessarily know what the parts are, and we haven't got circuit diagrams. Now, I'm really hoping that this uh, this pathetic little uh, dueling line package, I'm hoping it's going to put up a fight this time, because... Those relays just came out disappointingly easily, didn't they? But what we'll do is we'll try the uh, we'll try the usual route of uh, just trying to suck the solder off, and hopefully we'll fail at that, and uh, we'll have to get medieval on its ass. I think the first thing we'll do is uh, we talked about solder hardening up a bit in the past, didn't we? So I'm just going to actually just flood a load of uh, fresh solder onto here, and uh, probably try a bit of flux as well because we know it's covered in this horrible conformal coating and this is probably even more thickly covered than some of the other boards were that we played with the other day. Well I'm not sure if any of you have noticed but I might sound you know a little bit hyper today and if I do sound a little bit hyper it's because I've just eaten a huge box of Cadbury's cream eggs and if Cadbury's are listening by the way I'm quite happy to do some product placement. Anyway so basically I I went out and uh, I thought Easter's coming, well I didn't really think Easter was coming up, but have you noticed that the supermarkets are selling Cadbury's cream eggs? So I thought, I know, I will buy my wonderful wife some Cadbury's cream eggs and, uh, you know, for Easter or just as a little treat. And I took them on to, I took them into work and, uh, yeah, they were there sort of my shelf and oh, I just hear them calling to me, eat me, eat me, so... Yeah, I'm afraid I gave in, and uh, of course I just didn't, I, there was three of them in this box, and uh, well, I ate one, and then I enjoyed it so much, I ate the other one, and then I ate the third one, and then I really didn't do anything for the rest of the afternoon, I just felt really quite sick. Okay, so my uh, my solder sucker's not doing a particularly good job on this. And it's the umbrella treatment for you. I'm sure some of you will appreciate the wonderful wrist action there. I think it might be partly that this tip is probably a little bit too big and it's not forming a good seal around the uh, board. So we've just been giving the board a damn good sucking and uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've completely failed to, uh, to remove it. Fortunately, the camera won't come in as uh, close as I want you to. What I'm going to try next is, uh, is the technique that I mentioned the other week in that, yeah, I'm going to get a little bit medieval on this chip because I don't need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Uh, I'm going to cut the package off if I can, although it does look as though this big diode is sandwiched in. I'm going to have a go at cutting the package off and see if that gets me any further. And if I cut the uh, cut the body of the package off, I can unsolder it one leg at a time. Can you see that? It's, uh, it's chip has definitely been hot and uh, yeah, it's starting to break apart a little bit there. Right, okay, let's just see if we can uh, tease out some of these legs now. There's one out. That one feels as though, I was going to say, did we lose it? I think we lost a pad there, but it doesn't look as though it's got anything connected on that side. That's annoying. So we lost a pad. Okay, I think I might be struggling to get this package out a little bit, simply, simply because the, um, the diode is in the way. It's actually getting caught on the diode. <laughs> <laughs> See, this was meant to be the easy one to get off because I'd, I could actually break it up. So I don't know what it's going to be like trying to get the other one off. It 
Yeah, I'm afraid if any of you were expecting a masterclass on desoldering stuff, you come to the wrong place. Let's try putting some new soldering so we've got something to wick off. I think I've said sometimes that technique works. I don't know if you can see, there's the there's the chip we're trying to get off. And uh, yeah, like I say, I got the chip off, but such a struggle trying to clear these holes out. Um, I'd be interested to know if anybody knows why they are. Is it just that the uh, the holes are actually quite quite small for through hole components, or yeah, they're just swines? Just can't seem to uh, can't seem to get the solder out of them. I think the soldering tip we've got in there at the moment is probably bigger than it, it should be, but I, I tend not to swap them out that often purely because it's just a pain changing them all the time. But maybe we'd do better with a smaller desoldering tip on there. I don't know if we'll be able to repair this board. I've got a feeling I did look at it when it originally failed. And I think I came to the conclusion that the way the failure had actually managed to put 24 volts on the rest of the logic. So I think we're probably on to a non-starter. So I'm just pulling the spider's legs off one by one at the moment. Did I feel another spider's leg there? No. Just wondering if I'm going to have any more success trying to suck from the top side. I mean, in theory, it just looks like there's a ground plane on the top of the board, so I guess there's less tracks to uh, destroy. So I'm going to try having a. I'm going to go from the ground plane side. Yeah. Tell you what, I'm not winning with that. I will try and change that tip out. Does using a smaller tip help? Are uh, all the real men meant to be able to change these tips out while everything's still hot? I think that's what I heard. Hey, I tell you what, I'm a pro, aren't I? Never done that before. So this is a much smaller tip. And uh, I'm wondering if it's going to evacuate these holes any better. Only one way to find out. Don't worry, sir, this won't hurt a bit. Is this going to work any better? Let's give it a go. Yeah, I think it did. So, yeah, it's looking a bit better. Still not perfect. There we go. It helps to match the size of the, uh, I don't know, your solder sucker tip to the uh, job at hand. I'm sure that to most of you that was totally bleeding obvious. And I guess it was obvious to me I was just being a lazy bugger. It's not looking great, that is it? It's not, not exactly a beautiful job. In fact, I think some of them holes are still a bit blocked. I said this is going to be a quick video and I think I've, I've spent... Oh, well, I've spent a very long time trying to clean these holes out, haven't I? I'm wondering if what's happened is sometimes when you try to um, do some work on one of these things, the, the through hole, if you overwork one of these boards, what can happen is the, uh, the through hole plating can collapse on it and that ends up actually blocking the hole. And I'm kind of wondering if that's what I've done, if I've actually just so overworked it and so, so bastardized the thing that I've actually collapsed a through hole plating and uh, it's just never going to... Uh, it's just never going to unbung now. Tell you what, let's put this to one side and let's see if we can get the uh, the one removed from the Christmas tree. <laughs> Prayed my solder sucker again. It just totally failed to remove the solder from these. And I think what it is, is I think that the uh, the legs are tight enough in the holes so that they can't get a vacuum through it to actually clear the solder out. Although I've got to admit my solder sucker does seem a little bit feeble today so maybe it's a bit blocked. So I'm going to go to plan B which is, well I don't know, I'm kind of last resort. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat the whole part up using hot air and just hope I can pull it off the board. It's kind of a dirty trick but yeah, it when needs must and all that lot.
There. Okay, put some little bugger went wanging off there. So we got it out. So what we've got with that, we've got one very hot, but actually undamaged board. So what does anybody think? Is that a reasonable technique for actually removing difficult parts to uh, put the old hot air gun on them? Well, I certainly seem to have done less damage to the pads rather than poking about with that solder sucker. So, uh, yeah, it's a technique I've employed more than once, but is it a good idea? I don't know, you tell me. Now, again, I don't know if the uh, camera will focus in on this, but you see the... Uh, the pin on the far right hand side i don't know if you can see this that pin's got a little wedding ring on it so that has actually pulled off some of the through wall plating with it so it has done some damage taking it out it's an lm 2675 and uh, it's some form of soic switching regulator so i thought it was a switching regulator and i was uh yeah i was right that's what it is well what i thought we could also do is uh I don't even remember we said this capacitor looked a little bit bulgy so I thought we'd better just check it out with the ESR meter so let's do that. Okay so that's giving us a reading of uh, 2.5 ohms at, is it going to tell us the capacitance? Hmm, don't know. Maybe not, it's saying in circuit leaky so I'm guessing it struggles with that. But 2.5 ohms, that's definitely not right. So I think what we need to do is uh, get this little fella sucked off. Well that's interesting. Now that I've removed that capacitor, there appears to be, well, I can only describe it as carbon. There's actually a burn mark on that track. So I wonder if that's what's actually led to the failure of this device. Um, yeah, it's definitely very black and dirty. The actual track has carbonised. Yeah, something's definitely gone on there, hasn't it? Just make sure you know where I'm pointing at. Can you see that black mark there? I don't think I'll be able to... Black focus. I'm hoping you'll be able to see it. There's a little black burn mark there. So that definitely bears some more investigation. Something has gone on there, hasn't it? I've got a selection of these little brushes and uh, some of them are brass and some of them are fiberglass. I think some of them are steel, but I'm not going to use the fiberglass ones because I always end up with, uh, well, bits of fiberglass all over my skin. And I always end up hurting myself. Definitely uh, some like, somebody's took a bite mark out of this track here which is the uh, you know the main supply lead going into this device so uh, I can definitely see some carbon down there so yeah something's definitely gone on there. Many years ago I watched one of these uh, I think it was an, a, actually a pace training video where they showed a track that had been burnt like this and I think the recommended way to repair it is actually to scrape out the, all the charred material and uh, grind away the surface of the glass fibre using a Dremel and I think they actually cut the track and then they uh, like I say they grind out all the old carbon then they lay down some epoxy and then put a new section of copper foil on top of it and then some more um, epoxy and uh, yeah I don't know if we're going to do that in fact I think what I'll probably just do is stick some nail varnish over it yeah in fact that's what I will do right okay so uh, back to our Christmas tree <sighs> Well, that felt tight, didn't hear any vacuum pulling through there. <laughs> I think I said before, sometimes it's a bit hard to tell because there's so much conformal coating on here, it actually glues down the components. <laughs> And there's an absolutely perfect example of how not to remove something. Because you can see I've actually pulled it out and all I've done is I've, I've ripped all the through all plating off. So that was that was really stupid. You know, it was a really cack-handed way of doing it. But I did know that I was never going to have to reuse this old board. But if you know of a better way to remove these kind of things where... Well, I think the reality is the holes are probably just a little bit too small for some of the components. If you've got a successful way of uh, dealing with this kind of issue, uh, let me know. Let's just see if this capacitor is any better. Yeah, 0 0.02 ohms this time. 
and it's a big capacitor so here we go 4571 microfarad so yeah that's a lot better than the other one okay so we've replaced the capacitor and i've just connected 30 volts dc to the supply it's designed to run off ac but it, the first thing that happens is it goes through a fuse and then a bridge rectifier i'm not exactly sure how this circuit works but it looks like we've got 24 volt ac coming in goes to a fuse goes to this uh, rather large bridge rectifier then it feeds our main smoothing capacitor so here's our adjustable voltage regulator our what is it a 317t or something so again don't exactly remember what the pinouts are for these i think it's something like input output and adjust so let's just check them so 28 volts that looks like my input because uh, it's a couple of volt drops from the bridge rectifier it's a, it's a couple of volt drops down from our supply voltage which is 30 volts so that's the input 28 volts here's the output 24.23 and here's our adjustment what's that 27.97 i can't remember is the adjustment normally uh, something like 1.25 volts less than the output i can't quite remember i think something like that so we've still got the problem of our rather manky looking uh, pinouts here for our little SOIC regulator IC and uh, I'm going to have to try and get that in there and, and a lot of these holes look as though they closed up and I'm pretty sure the reason they closed up is because it's not just solder that's jammed in there. I think what I've done is um, when I tried to get the IC out, even though I was as careful as I could be, I think I actually um, probably ragged out some of the through hole plating and now it's kind of blocking the hole so uh hmm don't know i guess we'll just have to fiddle with it and we may just make the problem worse don't know we'll have to have a go won't we so i'm just trying to show you what we've got to contend with there it's uh it's not looking good now i think i can see through most of the holes it's just one of them that looks uh like particularly bad i'm wondering if uh any of my liquid flux might help in this situation to try and well, again, just remove it if it is any solder in there. Always works for that Roshman guy, doesn't it? Just putting plenty of flux on everything. Well, I'm actually not sure if that did it. Hurrah for flux, eh? What did, where did my manky chip go? be a bloody miracle if we get 5 volts out of this. Better make sure we stuff the little bugger in the right way around, don't we? It's almost going in that. Why won't it go in? It feels like there's one pin stopping it. Is it that one, I wonder? Yep, maybe it was right that's just gone down now please let me think i've got it in the right way around right i have okay let's try and uh, put this bad boy in it's got a bit of extra flux on which isn't going to do us any harm is it Right, well that one isn't going to solder down but it doesn't look as though there's a pad on this side so I think that's okay. That one's missing a pad as well so we'll have to touch it up on the other side. Ooh. Oh, and we've got a 5 volt LED lit up. 5 volt rail. What's it drawing? 71 milliamps. That seems like quite a lot. But it also doesn't seem ridiculous either. So uh, is anything getting hot? No. So let's check our 5 volt rail. Four point four six. That seems a little bit low, doesn't it? Might have to um, might have to just read up on this switching regulator, find out how the uh, the feedback works on it. 
because it could be a problem with the feedback. I, I would have thought that this should be closer to 5 volts. It's a half a volt under is a quite a way off, isn't it? This is a microprocessor that runs our circuit board here. And I just noticed that when we actually uh, plugged it in, our 24 volts dips out. So, so I suspect that maybe when the, uh, well it could have been this that caused a failure, I don't know, but I'm suspecting that when whatever component failed, and it, I guess it's interesting, I would be interesting to know what the chain of events were. <laughs> So we had this uh, switching regulator chip, which was actually blown apart. Um, we had this track down here that was all carbonized. So I wonder what the, um, you know, what the trail of events, what the crash investigator would say. I'm guessing he would probably say that when this IC failed and uh, cracked in half, it probably went short circuit. And that caused this whole incoming supply rail to be short-circuited and then maybe that heated up and failed. Although it didn't break the track, it obviously just developed a hot spot somewhere. And this microprocessor, now whenever I plug it back in, it's drawing excessive current. So I'm guessing something on here has died as well. And unfortunately, I no longer have any software to actually put back in one of these. Well, Basically, I don't want to risk putting another module in, another of these processor modules. I don't want to risk putting one in this board because if this board is a bit dodgy, I'm just going to blow up another rather expensive uh, processor card. So I'm afraid, everybody, maybe this video was all a little bit unsatisfactory. And uh, yeah, that sucks, doesn't it? Bye-bye for now. Bugger. Well... I hope this was as much fun for you as it was for me. Mm.